This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about standalone EFI and the basic fuel equation also known as the ideal gas law or PV equals NRT. I promise I'm not going to get into the geek part of this on the ideal gas law but if you want to look it up on Google you can find lots of more information. What this does, the PV equals NRT is the equation that lets us estimate how much actual air is in the intake manifold. This is the basic fuel equation that we use to calculate the pulse width at the injectors. Let's take one piece of this at a time. In green I've highlighted everything that is multiplied together to come up with the base pulse width. Basically if you notice in the upper left corner is a bracket and between every piece of this is a multiply all the way down. We'll take on each one of these one at a time. First is the injector size constant. What this constant does is gives the ECU a basis to know just how big the injector is compared to how big the motor is. The bigger the motor, the longer it has to spray the injector. The next piece we have is the fuel pressure to fuel flow compensation. Basically what this does is most ECUs assume that you have between 42 and 60 PSI pressure drop across the injector. What happens is, is when you get into turbocharged and supercharged installations, the fuel pressure is constantly changing and so is the pressure in the intake manifold. So what this is, is a correction factor for what is the actual pressure drop across the injector at any given time. The next piece is the MAP divided by 100. What this has is normally an option in the ECU setup that basically balances these two pieces of the equation to a little bit flatter table. Most of the time I do end up turning that on. The next piece is our speed density lookup. It's the volumetric efficiency lookup based on RPM and manifold air pressure divided by 100. The next piece is the alpha n section of the fuel equation and it's just like the speed density but it is a VE lookup based on RPM, throttle position and also divided by 100. The next piece is the target AFR table. If your table is in AFR, then it's the top equation, which is 14.7, the stoichiometric ratio for gasoline, divided by the target AFR lookup in your AFR target lookup table. If you happen to be using lambda as you're in your AFR lookup table, then it simplifies a little bit. You no longer have this 14.7, and all you get is the lookup table value. The next piece comes from the acceleration enrichment and decel enlignment. It's merely coming off a lookup table of some sort that you've set your ECU in. Any time that the acceleration enrichment is needed because of a drop in manifold air pressure or an increase in throttle position. This is all adjustable in your ECU. The next set are what I call the air corrections. Basically this is the correction for the air density as it's coming into the air filter and heading out the exhaust system. The first one is in coming in the air filter or in the case of a turbocharged motor normally this is taken after the throttle body. The next piece is the barometric pressure correction. Basically what this is is a correction for the exhaust back pressure. The last piece is the engine temp warm-up correction. Basically what this part of the calculation does is gives a correction for how well the intake manifold can hold the fuel in suspension. If you've got a very cold intake manifold or the water temperature is low, normally we do base this off of water temperature, fuel wants to collect on the intake manifold. It never really makes it into the cylinder as a burnable fuel. Fuel needs to be evaporated to ignite. So that is the correction for that. Normally this goes to a, a one at about 160 degrees F water temperature. Next is the learned fuel corrections. Basically it's your long-term fuel trim and your short-term fuel trim. The short-term is the immediate correction 
based on what the O2 sensor is telling the ECU. And the first one is the long-term or an accumulation of the short terms. Injector dead time. This is the only piece of this equation that is after these pair of brackets. This piece is added on at the very end of all fuel calculations. Now let's talk a little bit about mass airflow. Basically the things I've highlighted in red generally go away when you have a mass airflow in the system. Basically you no longer have to calculate based on speed density or alpha n the density of the air, nor do you have to worry about the intake air temperature or the barometric pressure. That's all built into your mass airflow. The pieces of the calculation that I have boxed in purple are the most critical calculations that cannot be ignored. The first one, the injector size constant, you can choose speed density or alpha n or mass airflow, pick any one, and injector dead time. All the rest of these terms, depending on how you have the code set up, essentially drop to a one. I want to thank my friends at tunerstudio.com. These are the developers of Megalog Viewer HD, the software I use to tune most of these motors. Once you understand the pieces of the fuel equation, it gets far easier to tell what it is that data logs are telling you. Thank you for watching and please hit subscribe in my YouTube channel.